Hey everybody, I'm Cliff and for CCB. I'm doing something a little different today. My wife and I took a cruise for two weeks and then we have flown here to the island of Bonaire. Uh, it's about 50 miles off the coast of Venezuela. It's got the greatest snorkeling and diving in the Western Hemisphere. And this is where I got my scuba certification uh, 19 years ago, actually, 2005. We've been coming back ever since and it's just wonderful. So if you like to snorkel or dive, this is the place to come. All right, um, because I was on a cruise, I wasn't allowed to bring a ham radio on, on the ship. Uh, believe it or not, Royal Caribbean even lists ham radios as things that are prohibited from bringing aboard the ship. So um, that was a little bit of a bummer because I knew I was gonna have a couple of weeks down here in Bonaire. Uh, what I decided to do was just to uh, leave my radio running uh, back at home with a computer attached to it and just remote into it. So the radio I'm using at home is a Flex Radio 6300 that I've had um, for about a decade, and I still love that radio. Uh, it is software driven, so by using TeamViewer here on my laptop, I can connect to that computer and run the software as if I were sitting there. Now, I'm not able to do Morse code with a paddle from here, but I can use the keyboard and just send uh, characters from the keyboard. It's not, it's not great. It's not what I would like, uh, but it's good enough and it gets the job done. So um, <clears throat> if, you, if you don't have a flex and you're not, a, not able to run smart SDR software, um, there are other things you can do. Like I've got a, a package for my Elocraft radios called Win4K Suite. I think that's right. I'll put it up here on the screen. Um, so you'll see what it is. But it's a really cool software package that lets you control your Elecraft rigs. Um, if you're gonna do that, you may need to use like a signal link box so that you can take uh, the audio that's coming out of the radio, put it into the signal link box, which shows up as a, a USB uh, codec uh, audio driver. Uh, and the same thing uh, with the transmitter. So anything that you uh, send out of your speaker on the computer goes into the microphone jack of the radio. Anything coming out of the microphone, uh, the, the headphone jack of the radio goes into the microphone jack of the computer so that you can kind of, you know, do the audio both ways uh, so you can hear it. So using that, you can use Skype, for example. Set your computer up so that it automatically answers and uh, you can have the two-way audio going that way instantly. Uh, anyway, there's a lot of ways to skin that cat. I'm not going to go into that here. Um, but you can definitely remote your radio using software to control it and a remote computer to access the computer that's controlling your radio back at home. Uh, so what I have done is, is uh, I've recorded a, a little POTA hunting. Uh, I uh, got to the, the POTA app on, on my computer uh, at home and saw that there was a Texas station um, that was active and uh, his call sign was NM5N, a station in Texas, and he was uh, working a POTA, and so I decided, since he was the first one on the list that came up, that I would just uh, go ahead and work him. I'm going to drag my power slider down from 100 watts to 5 watts because, well, hey, QRP, right? And I'll move my cursor down here to the live field so that whatever I type is going to go out as Morse code. He's finishing up with the station here. And so as soon as he finishes, I throw out my call sign.
Okay, pretty cool, huh? You can be 2,000 miles away and still access your radio and do some POTA hunting. Or just call CQ and uh, have a conversation with somebody. Just because you don't have your radio with you doesn't mean that you can't play radio. And I guess that's it for this one. I hope you guys have a, a great weekend coming up, and I will see you later.